Hi guys, I'm Beth. We are going to do a March reading wrap up today. Thanks for joining today. I'm Beth. This is Read Remark. Let's do a wrap up for the month of March. This was a very, very heavy reading month for me. There was a lot going on. There was the Tournament of Books. There was March Mystery Madness. There was a lot. And so a lot of reading that went on in conjunction with that. So I'm going to try and keep this as brief as possible, but I feel like I have a lot of things that I need to talk about, a lot of different subjects I need to touch on. So let's just dig right in. <laughs> okay, the first book I read this month was Red Clocks by Lenny Zumas. I give this one four stars. Red Clocks follows four different women who live in a dystopian country in which abortion is illegal. We get to see the differing stories of what happens to these women when they don't have full control over their own bodies. We kind of see things from both sides of the spectrum. There's one uh, teen pregnancy where she wants desperately to have an abortion. We see on the other end of the spectrum this woman who desperately wants to get pregnant and is having trouble doing that. But because of all the different laws that the government has over these women's bodies, none of them are able to quite do what they want to do. It's very interesting, and when you look at it together with this um, grouping of books that kind of revolve around women's rights and how controlling their reproductive rights um, can really infringe on that, don't want to get political here, <laughs> but I mean, just realistically speaking, it's, um, it's kind of eye-opening, kind of shocking, kind of um, scary, kind of scary. Think of it maybe not quite a modern day Handmaid's Tale, but kind of a good sibling companion to the book. Okay, the next one I read was You Will Know Me by Megan Abbott. This woman does really well with writing teen girls. And indeed, this is what this book follows. It has this, uh, this girl who is this phenom with gymnastics has been since she was a child in some freak accident, cut off like a piece of her toe, and so she turned to gymnastics, and somehow, maybe it was the piece of toe that was missing, maybe it was her phenomenal drive, maybe it was some inlaid talent that she had, but she's fabulous with gymnastics. You kind of see the different social dynamics that happen with these teen girls and then at the same time there is a mystery going on and you see the dynamics of all the families of these gymnastic kids as well. Um, it's just fascinating seeing this and this was the book that introduced me to Megan Abbott and I had read um, a bunch of other books since then by her. She has another one coming out later this year that I'm really looking forward to reading as well. Four stars. The next book was The Mary Spinster, another four star read for me. If you want to check out more of my thoughts on this book, go watch my video review of this book. In this book, Mallory Ortberg takes um, some of the old tales that we know and love from the likes of such people as the Grimm Brothers or Hans Christian Andersen and gives an even darker spin to them. It is wonderfully delicious. <laughs> So, I mean, thinking in the, in the continuum of Hans Christian Andersen books, he was already pretty dark to begin with. I mean, these aren't exactly feel-good stories that you're turning to here. The Little Mermaid, for example, turns to sea foam. Well, the Mary Spinster takes that a step further and does that with several of our well-loved books. It's very, very awesome. <laughs> All right, guys. I'm going to get real with you for a minute and talk about something that's a little bit controversial and that is bad reviews. This is one of those things that I think may make my video a little longer than usual. I'll try not to chat too long about it, but my thoughts are still kind of all over the place on it. So one of the things I'm passionate about, passionate about is giving um, accurate reviews for, for me, for my experience. I want to be honest and truthful in what I'm reviewing. I don't just give away five stars willy-nilly, although a lot of the re, um, video reviews you see from me are four and five star reads. That's because I feel so passionately about them that I want to make a video about it. For every one of those, trust me, there are lots of other books I read that aren't nearly as good. So it's not like I give these four and five star reviews to everything I read. Now, I believe in honesty, 
At the same time, I don't believe in completely eviscerating an author. I don't see it very often, but every now and then I'll see a review that's just full of so much snark and almost gleefully taking down the author with everything that they've got, and I don't really feel like that's a review. I feel like that's more just a snarky takedown. <laughs> Snark is okay, but if you're just trying to take down an author, wh why? Why? Um, I just, I don't, I don't get it. So, um, <laughs> I'm saying all this because I'm about to give a bad review. <laughs> but it's because it's, it's not a takedown, it's more my honest feeling and kind of coming from a place of wanting to hear from you what I was missing in this book that's coming up. Because it's a book that other people gave great reviews to and I just wasn't crazy about it, I couldn't connect with it, that book is Manhattan Beach by Jennifer Egan. She, um, she won a prize for her previous book, I think it's something with the Goon Squad, I haven't read that one either but I hear that that one's even better. Um, Manhattan Beach follows a girl, she has this um, father who had ran off a long time ago, a mother who has spent most of her adult life working hard to care for their sis her sister who is um, profoundly, has profound disabilities. So we follow this main character girl who grows up um, without her father and then runs into the man that he had done some shady dealings with and it feels like it just kind of rambles from there and it's not a bad book it's not a bad story but for some reason it couldn't keep my interest and so I gave it two stars and I feel kind of bad about that because usually um, I don't like to talk about books on here that I give less than a three star review to so I'm all for talking about the good points of a book and contrasting it with the bad points of a book but if it's a book that I just genuinely don't enjoy, usually I just won't even bring it up on video. Um, but I feel like I'm missing something with this one. It was part of the tournament of books. It did, it did well. It made it to the brackets. Um, ultimately, it got beaten by the book it was put up against. But, I mean, it made it to the brackets. It made it to, to the short list. A lot of people like it, so I'm hoping that if any of you read this book, you can tell me in the comments what you loved about it. Maybe I'll be able to gain some insight there, but it got to where, for me, reading it was almost like work. Like I just wanted to hurry up and get through it so I can move on to something better, um, something that caught me more. And again, it's not because it was badly written. It wasn't. It's not because it had bad characters. It didn't. There's just something in it that I personally did not connect with. And so I'm, I'm putting the blame on me for that, but I just, I don't know, it kind of troubles me. It troubles me when there's a well-beloved book by a well-lauded author that I'm like, eh. So I, I just let me know. All right, the next book is Dear Cyborgs by Eugene Lim, and I feel much the same way about that as I did about Manhattan Beach. Although I give Dear Cyborgs three stars because it might be rambly and disconnected, or it might be secretly genius. I'm still undecided on which one that is. <laughs> it follows a man and all these seemingly disjointed things that happen and oh yeah there are superheroes that pop into the story and it's very meta and we have things kind of come full circle but it's not really a satisfying circle. So I'm going to read you this quote from Hua Su from The New Yorker. He says, after a while, it becomes clear that what propels the novel isn't an overarching plot or a conspiracy, but anecdotes, episodes, and fantastical interludes that point to the book's guiding ethos. So basically, the point here is that there is no point. <laughs> the point is that it's supposed to be disjointed interludes, and it's kind of deconstructing the very act of reading itself. If that's the point, then well done. He accomplished what he was after in writing Dear Cyborgs. For me, it was still not a great reading experience, um, just because trying to tie all of that together in my mind, um, where there really isn't a tie to bring it together in my mind, is not, not, not. <laughs> so three stars, it may be secretly genius, 
to me it was still kind of dis disjointed and jumbly but I, I kind of see where the author was getting what the author was getting at if that was indeed what he was getting at so not eloquent with that but whatever so here's another book that I was very thoroughly meh with and that is The Idiot by Elif Batuman this is yet another contender in the tournament of books and one that has already passed two rounds already so it's doing pretty well and it mystifies me I give this book three stars. It follows Selin, a Turkish-American girl in 1995 who is entering her first year at Harvard. So obviously she's very smart. She kind of drifts from one subject to another, learning all these different theories, subjects, advanced science, only to find that really her calling is in a creative field writing. But that's not really the journey that we're on in this book. It's not like we're finding her or she's finding herself. It's more that she is just kind of rambling from one, one incident to the next. And there's nothing really that's helping her character develop, helping the story have any sort of plot other than Girl Goes to College. I, I don't get it. It's another one that I just don't understand why people are giving it so much, um, so much accolades. I, and I, I feel like I'm being overly negative. I don't want to do that. But at the same time, it's just not a very compelling book for me. This was another one that I kind of had the dread factor. Every time I picked it up, I just wanted to speed through it so I could just get it done, get it done. Usually if there's a book that's not really capturing me, capturing my attention, I'll just DNF it. I'll set it aside and move on to the next thing. Maybe I'll tick it off on Goodreads so I can get credit for having at least tried. Um, I didn't feel like I could do that with these because they're part of the tournament of books and I wanted to give them a fair shot. But this kind of wrapped up a triumvirate of books that I was like, what? It just didn't catch me. In his judgment, when he passed the idiot on through to the next round, um, the judge for the tournament of books, Ismail Muhammad, said something to the effect that he admired in the idiot that it was a book that was not afraid to be boring. It was not afraid to take in all those quiet moments. It was not afraid to be dull. That's true. That's true and that's a very good judgment, very apt. For me though, that just kind of um, strengthens the reason that I was not crazy about the book. I, I just don't really have a lot of investment in a book that is invested in being boring. So. <laughs> Not the best book for me, but I still gave it three stars because it wasn't the worst either. It was kind of interesting to see the winking nods to 1995 and also to the uncertainty of young adult life as you're kind of on the brink of having to figure out where that trajectory is going to go. There just wasn't enough of that in there for me. So that was kind of painful. <laughs> that was a little bit painful. I'm not crazy about giving reviews for books that I don't like um, because sometimes if I if I have to really reach to say something nice about them I don't want to come off as being disingenuous but at the same time they're tournament of book books and so I'm sure there will be people out there who will be able to point out the beauty that I am missing so I'm going to give you a wonderful dessert book that is part of the tournament of books and by dessert I mean completely unpleasant and heart-wrenching and heartbreaking and will make you lose faith in humanity, but damn it, it's five stars, so good on you, book. It is Lucky Boy by Shanti Sakarin. This is a book that follows a little boy named Ignacio. He's, um, we see him born and then in his young toddlerhood. His mother, Soli, is an illegal immigrant from Mexico. Her immigration, illegal immigration from Mexico to the U.S. was harrowing, harrowing. And then um, she got picked up by immigration after Ignacio was born and separated from him. And then her time in jail is harrowing. And her journey to try and get back to him is harrowing. Meanwhile, we follow this other couple who seems to have everything going for them. They are um, gainfully employed, they have a nice house, they're very much in love, 
and they become foster parents of Ignacio. They cannot get pregnant. That's the one thing really missing in their lives that they want so desperately. So when they get Iggy, that's what they nickname him, they fall just head over heels in love with this little boy, think of him as theirs, and they form a family, the three of them. He starts to call them Mama and Papa, and it's just, um, they form a really sweet bond. Meanwhile, Soli is trying, trying, trying to get back to her boy. And so we see the push-pull here, of parent versus parent, and this little lucky boy in the middle who every which way he's pulled is love, but he's pulled. He's pulled, and it's a situation that is just so sad. Um, Oh man, the things that happened to Soli in this book are just, <sighs> it was satisfying the way they ended it, but at the same time still sad. I mean, there's no happy ending to this. There's heartbreak whichever way you turn. All right, the next book is The Woman in the Window by A.J. Finn. I am going to be brief on this one because I already talked about it in my previous video, so go check that out. It is five stars. It follows Anna, an agoraphobic woman who watches her neighbors through her window, rear window style, kind of Hitchcockian in the construct. She sees something happen, but she's on these powerful antipsychotic medications to try and help her with her intense agoraphobia. And she drinks a lot. She's not supposed to mix the medication with the alcohol, but she does a lot and is subject to hallucinations. And so she's not reliable at all at all. At the same time, we still have the feeling that there's something not quite right going on, something fishy's going on. It's a really good pot boiler of a mystery and dovetailed really neatly into March Mystery Madness, which was a fun tag that a lot of Instagrammers, Bookstagrammers, um, people on Twitter and people on YouTube did to celebrate mysteries during the month of March. Next, I'm going to talk about romance. Ah, oh, love, sweet love. <laughs> so March was a really busy month for me, probably for you guys too. You might notice we had like five weeks in it and so it just seemed to go on interminably. There was a lot going on. Um, you might see from my tournament of books reading that I had a pretty heavy reading load. And so I wanted to mix in some romance in there. So. I'm not trying to demean the romance genre. It is not just for bored housewives. It's not just for um, if you want to take a break from your real reading. It's still, I believe strongly, it's a valid genre on its own right. I will defend it strongly just like I do any of the other genres. So <laughs> that was a little ranty. Didn't mean to do that. But I, as much as I defend it, I am so unfamiliar with it. Usually I go for literary fiction or thrillers, the grittier and more R-rated, the better. <laughs> Gotta have some cuss words or it's just not gritty enough. So um, with, with romance, I'm just not that well initiated into it. And it seems like a whole lot of romance is geared towards new adult. And I have no problem with that at all. One of my favorites is Colleen Hoover that I like to read from that genre. But um, I am pretty well established into my adulthood. <laughs> so. I wanted some different options as well so I wouldn't have to just rely on that one author because I'm just not really well initiated on any of it. And so I went to Twitter, asked the romance genre um, readers what their recommendations are and they delivered in droves. It was so awesome. They were so friendly and gave me all sorts of recommendations, didn't look down on me at all for not knowing what I'm talking about with that genre. Um, just so generous with with the information, which I, I'm just so appreciative. So um, I'm sure they're not watching because I tend to review different genres of books on my booktube channel, but if any romance readers are out there, I just want to say thank you. Thank you for being very generous with your time, with your beloved authors. It's so much appreciated, so much appreciated. Hopefully I was able to give some of that appreciation back because I spent pretty much all that Friday night buying book after book based on the recommendations that people were giving. So very nice Friday night. 
On that same token, the cozy mystery readers um, for, that I have found out about during March Mystery Madness are also very generous with their recommendations and talking about these cozy mysteries, which is a whole other genre that I did not even realize existed. I didn't even know. Um, I went to the library kind of recently and was just looking in the mystery section to see what was out there and was completely tickled with all of these books I saw that were themed around cozy things. It's really fun. It's fun. It's not my genre, but again, I will defend it to my dying breath along with the Oxford comma and having one space after a period instead of two. So. <laughs> If you need a good reading recommendation, turn to the cozy mystery readers, turn to the romance readers. They will be so welcoming and so generous with their recommendations. That was very long and rambly. I'm so sorry. I'm going to get right on to the next book I read. That is Bachelor Nation by Amy Kaufman. Um, I'm a little embarrassed to admit it. Go ahead and judge me because I judge myself, but I recently came out as a fan of The Bachelor. Not just a fan, but a fan. I watch all of the different iterations, The Bachelor, Bachelor Games, um, Bachelor in Paradise, Bachelor Pad, all sorts of Bachelors. I think I hate watch it maybe just because there are some characters that I'm like, oh this person is so terrible I have to tune in to see what they're gonna do next. It's like, you know, if you dated 25 people separately in your real life, that's not really a big deal, but to have all those people literally lined up and basically one sits on a couch, you have a makeout session with them and then they leave and then the next one comes and sits on the couch, you have a makeout session with them and then they leave and it's almost like an assembly line of makeouts and it just, I don't get it. I don't get how that can lead to true lasting love. Sometimes it does. I don't get it. But still, I watch. I can't stop myself. I, like Amy Kaufman, feel all of the snark but also all of the fandom in continuing to watch The Bachelor because you know when the next season comes up I'm going to be watching. Alright, my last book of the month that I'm going to talk about is The Wedding Date by Jasmine Guillory. This is a refreshing book that takes a lot of the romance tropes that people hate and just does away with them. It's a lot more relatable to the people. So it is a woman and a man. They both are doing very well professionally. They both have very full personal lives already, but they happen to meet on a broken down elevator one night. He needs a date for a wedding. She's game. She's willing to go along. So they go and they fall in lust from there. It's a really good story. I like it. I give it four stars. All right, I'm going to wrap it up because I am tired of talking. You're probably tired of hearing me talk. So until next week, I say go forth and read whatever genre you like and know that you are a great reader. Why did I go all Oprah there? There was no need for that. <laughs> I'll just say go forth and read whatever. Have a good week. Thanks for tuning in. I'll catch you guys next time. Bye.